Now we're going to measure the position of the centre of mass of a bunch of shapes. You can think of the centre of mass as being the average position of all the mass of an object. In fact, if you took an object and divided it up into a large number of pieces of equal mass and then took the average of all those positions, that average position would be the centre of mass of the object. But we're not going to do a complicated calculation like that. Instead, I'm going to take advantage of an old builder's trick to find the centre of mass of these objects. I've got here a circle, and the trick that I'm going to take advantage of is this. If an object is suspended, and it's not swinging, so it's at equilibrium position, the centre of mass will lie directly underneath the point of suspension. So somewhere along this line is the centre of mass. And uh, here's a really neat, quick way to work out where that line is. Here's a plumb bob. It's a weight on a string. We'll just make sure nothing's moving. And I'll mark the position of that string. So somewhere along that line is the centre of mass. But we don't know where. I mean, you might have a guess where it is. But we're going to be experimental about it and test it. Now if we suspend it from another position, that rule still applies. The centre of mass still lies somewhere under that point of suspension. So now we've changed the position of point of suspension. That means that the, the centre of mass should be at the intersection of those two lines. All right, so if I'm right, that means the centre of mass is there. However, I'm just going to, not going to, I'm not going to take my own competence as red. I'm going to just do one more to confirm that I haven't made a boo-boo. And you'll see that in line with expectation, all three lines intersect at one point, and that point is the centre of mass. Now you'll notice that the centre of mass happens to coincide with the geometric centre of the circle. I guess that's not terribly surprising. A circle is a very symmetric object, and you might expect that the centre of mass is going to take, you know, is going to be symmetrical as well. So, um, so there you have it. Now, if we have an, a slightly less symmetrical object, we'll see if if we get a similar behaviour. This is an equilateral triangle, so it's still reasonably symmetric. All right, centre of mass lies somewhere on that line. Okay, it's looking awfully like that's where the centre of mass is, but as I say, never trust your first two measurements without a third one. Bingo! That's looking a lot like the centre of mass is sitting right at the geometric centre of the triangle. In fact, that point, if you remember from your maths classes, is called the centroid of this triangle. And you can actually do the calculations yourself, but uh, do that at home when I'm not watching. Right, now we have a slightly less symmetrical object. Okay, it's a semicircle. It's, it's symmetric this way, so, you know, it's like a mirror image across here, but it's not so symmetric that way. So it's a little bit harder to guess where the centre of mass is going to be. Now, in case you're wondering why that's not horizontal, it's because that hole is not drilled right in the centre of this diameter. Alright, looks like it's there, but 
never trust anyone over 30 so let's uh, Now I hope you agree with me that that looks like it's smack in the middle horizontally. A little hard to tell which way it is that way, well, but I believe my measurement. All right. Now we're really uh, getting Difficult to see what the symmetry is, so even harder to guess. I like to think of this as a re-entrant quadrilateral. No prizes for guessing where it's going to be along this direction. All right, as you see, Smack in the middle, left, right, and that way, yeah, a little bit more obscure. Now, I think by now you're getting a bit bored with all these symmetric shapes, so here we go. I've totally broken the mould here. Let's see, will I... Uh, hmm. All right, we'll start with that. I don't know how you'd describe that shape, but I can't see any axis of symmetry there. You'll notice the important thing about this shape is it's got a big bite taken out of it. That's going to, I wonder if that's going to cause problems. Oh dear. You can see here that the center of mass is right on the boundary, right on the edge of the shape here. And in fact, if I had taken a little bit out of it, there's no reason why I couldn't have got it so that the center of mass was actually off the object. The center of mass does not have to be inside the object. When a high jumper jumps over a high jump bar, the experts jump in such a way, they flop over the, the high jump bar in such a way that their center of mass actually passes under the bar. The reason for that is it means you don't have to, to do so much work to jump over the bar because the amount of work you do is going to depend on how high your center of mass goes. forgot to mention, all that stuff we were just doing now, that was all two-dimensional shapes. Once it's a three-dimensional shape, it gets far more complicated. Now, for example, look at this system here. Just like with the two-dimensional shapes, the center of mass is always going to be sitting under the point of suspension when it's at equilibrium, which means the center of mass is down here somewhere. Try this at home. Oh, 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 oh.
contact. Okay, there we go, there we go. Quiet on the set. <laughs> See, ever since Joe came in, it's just fallen yeah. apart. 